Hello, thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to bubble up, arise, present themselves when one goes on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Uh, hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I do creative process coaching and uh, UX stuff, and I make video games. Good How to you see you again. Jersey? Doing okay. Uh Hi, good to see you again. Uh, slowly yeah. figuring out this this Twitch thing, uh, streaming on Twitch. Yeah, it's really neat. You're, I mean, you've cracked a few um, different challenges in in getting this all all arranged, and uh, it's it's really neat to see to see it coming along. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited too. Where a lot of uh, a lot of what you're setting up when the when the when the time comes when I'll be doing. Uh, another, you know, I have another uh, opportunity to do the the hosting and technical direction. I think it's repeatable, right? That's what's neat. It's mm-hmm. the other setup was um, super convenient, and you know, uh, I'm pretty grateful for Google Hangouts for however many years it served us. I mean, at least six ish. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah. But, but this <laughs> might be actually um, some improvements due to needing to move. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny how well, how does that old saying go about necessity being a, a parent of something or other. Um, yeah. So I've been I've been slowly digging through. And actually, um, I, I I feel like I would like to put a call out to the leaners to a- ask about other streaming platforms. Not to say like oh now now that we figured out Twitch we're going to jump ship. It's just that in my exploration of this, I was learning about all these other streaming platforms and like l- learning about more about Picardo thinking like, okay, well, that's a place where people stream, live stream their drawings, right? And then there's Microsoft Mixer, which apparently has some affordances and advantages. Um, so, and, and then learning more about OBS, the software we're using to like do all this broadcasting stuff. Um, it, it has been uh, very interesting and, and a lot of fun to learn, but um, I'm also curious about where other people are streaming their media. Um, and, you know, YouTube as well, but yeah, we're still continuing to put the videos on YouTube, but we're stream for now. We're streaming on Twitch, seeing how that goes. So, um, speaking of which, if you're new to the show, and probably a lot of you are, if you're watching it on Twitch, um, we usually spend about an hour. We t- pick a single topic, try to drill down as far as we can on it. With the first half, we look at what it looks like when we're engaging with the topic. The second half, second half of the show, is usually um, us unpacking how we think about that topic. Um, so are you ready to jump into it, Rob? Yeah, I'm ready. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? We're talking about uh, l- generating ideas, making lists, and naming creative challenges. Is that what you... Creative challenge naming? <laughs> well, naming things in and, in and of itself is, is a challenge, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I'm alone when... Uh, and it's, we can use this idea of uh, together brainstorming, solo brainstorming, uh, generating that and that that as a practice uh, is I think it's I think it's incredibly useful. Uh, it's but it has sort of its own ups and downs where you, you, know, you feel like, um, well, I had my one idea. Let's move on. <clears throat> and then then trying to go further than that can can feel tough. And uh, uncomfortable, so like I, I think it'd be fun because to to explore that because I'd also think it's incredibly useful. And in, in one of the common use cases I think is well, if you have to name a thing, um, mm-hmm. that's it's 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 not uh, it's not easy, right? Um, a lot of a lot of us. Um, I mean, I think early early in my career, I would just get I would just get literal, like super literal, like this is the machine that does that. <laughs> <laughs> I would name software these literal things. Mm-hmm. And that's that you know it got me by, but I but I kind of all knew that I could I could dig in, I could do a little better. So ended up learning different things like this. Like what what's your what's your um, feeling about this? Uh, well, I yeah, I certainly have run into difficulty in naming projects. Right. Um, I, I remember especially back in 2007 when I was running uh, an online comics anthology called Sugary Serials. Um, I developed a couple projects for that, and one of them was called Equalizers of the Divide. And I was like, oof, that was a, that was a tough title. It doesn't really describe what it is. You know, it, 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 when I explained it, 
it ex- it described what it was, but it, and then there was another comic I worked on in 2000, 2000 like I want to say four to th- through two thousand six called the replacements, which. Hmm. You had to get to the end of the book to figure out why they were called The Replacements. <laughs> Which, when you're reading a graphic novel, that's one thing. But when it's a serialized comic that spans over two years, it was like, okay, why is this called The Replacements now? So, yes, I have I have a, a mixed history with this. Uh, one of my first graphic novel projects was called The Front Rebirth, right? The Front Rebirth. Why is it called that? You know, uh, it doesn't really describe what the thing is. So, uh, It does make you curious, though. I mean, those are, those are titles that, that, that are... <laughs> There's a lot of like, wait, what's this? There's, there's, those are not literal <laughs> as, as in literal in describing the contents of the box. It's, it, there's like a, it's almost, you're, you're describing a hidden prize. I, I bet if we went back through Lena to our episode titling over the years, you could tell which ones are mine and which ones are yours based on that too. Like Rob's are very <laughs> descriptive and literal and mine are always very vague and abstract. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I bet that's funny. I bet there is a bit of a pattern. Um, maybe a couple of patterns of patterns. That'd be fun. All so, right. Yeah. Well, you name projects. We name, you just mentioned naming episodes of a thing. There's, I mean, just naming stuff all the time. So I think that's a, that's going to be a pretty big, uh, a pretty big hook why we're digging into this. Topic. And we're going to be doing some demoing. So it'd be worth watching the video of this one if you normally consume it as an audio podcast, but we'll do our best to describe what we're doing. So with that, here we go. <laughs> you can hear the music again. I fixed my audio settings. Right. Feel it. <laughs> oh, yes. I finally, I spent, who knew you spent a couple hours working on something. You'll actually learn how to do it right. Um, okay. So uh, where do you want to start, Rob? Well, okay. So what's, what, what is a thing that would be, I don't know, safe to talk about naming? Like I thought um, this is sort of a what if Ethan one for example, um, but we don't have to take this one. We could say, what would be like a renaming idea? Like, what could we rename Lean Into Art as? Oh, okay. Um, but we could pick something else too. But well, naming. we can start with that. Let's let's see renaming Lean Into Art. So you get it. I'll I'll be note taker if you facilitate. All so right. I'm writing out Lean well, I, Into Art. So I think it helps to. Um, Jump, you know, so jumping into a void of nothingness is is typically not advised, right? Um, I think you know you got to start somewhere with with your ideas, but then I think it's safe if you say like, well, I don't, it's only like no, the if you keep it so it's a short fall, a short drop. You're like it's nothingness. Oh, it's but it's only like six feet or so. Um, mm-hmm. be, and so just starting out with like, uh, what if we ta- what if we brainstormed and the things that came to mind about what what lean into art is about first. And okay. Then, yeah. I'm going to capture the aboutness. Yeah. What is Lean Into Art about? Um, well, it's about exploration of um, exploration of creative endeavors. Hey, there I am being abstract again. Exploration. Writing it out. So, so I'm writing stuff down too, like safe place to learn. A safe place to learn. Yep. Question. Uh, let's see. There's the. Uh, do we have? I'm gonna look at the stream. Do you have a visual of this? Going I on? do. I, it's up on the screen now. Oh and my gosh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so if. Um, I, th- I think I shouldn't mess up, mess anything up, but I'll, 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 um, I'll see if I can participate in the visuals as we're doing this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So exploration, creative endeavors, safe place to learn. Uh, all right. Let's give us, all right, let's give us like another minute to come up with a few more ideas about. Yeah. The um, um, let's see. Uh, thoughtful, inclusive. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got a small pen. Grab a bigger pen. Okay, thoughtful, inclusive. Then uh, it's let's see, reflecting on one's own uh, experiences and trying to feed that into the next thing. So it's like you're you're building new art based on your past past work. Building new art. 
Okay, building new art based on past uh, development. Yeah, nice. Uh, okay, what about maybe one or one or two more? Uh, let's see. Modeling curiosity. Well, yeah, right on. That's good. Just yeah, we we you know feeding our um feeding ideas. Oh, 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 people. Uh, thank you in the chat. Okay. We got subleaners. We got renaming things. Fun is jumping into a void of nothing. So that's good. Uh, feelings about one's creative process. Ah, from uh, Lithmus. Feelings about creative process. Yep. Um. Okay. So I think that's that's a good example. So you could you could put a little you know do stuff within a, a reasonable time frame because even though you don't jump off into total nothingness you want to you know box it in some way when you to to get yourself ready to do, to dig deeper uh it's nice to um you know not be still yeah they're you know tortured forever right you that 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 timeline is 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 helpful to mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. you know it's going to end soon even if it hurts so <laughs> Yes. Yes. There are some of us who need to know when it's going to end. Like when you're getting a root canal, it's nice to know that this will end at some point and having a sense of that. Uh, or like when you're, when you're exercising, when you look at the clock, you're like, okay, only two more minutes of this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. all right. So now what? All right. So, um, oh, got another one. Uh, you guys talk about the importance of regularly shipping things a fair amount. Yeah, that's true. So, um, having uh, frequent practice rather than infrequent, you know, that's, and then, yeah, the, the word shipping can mean lots of stuff, but it's like the, you, you get, you complete the full creative cycle and, uh, and go through that. Right. Cause you, mm -hmm. you can, you know, we, yeah, I guess we do. That's kind of a, uh, yeah, that's a really good one. Cause it's not always explicit where we're pushing the, the, the value of that. Nice. Um, Okay. So then I was thinking we could do um, like one more stage before the naming. We could do, okay. um, we could think about who we are trying to reach. Oh, yeah. Let's think about that. All right. So who, who's it for? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it. It's it. Mm. What is it? All right. So, <laughs> no more joke. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Who's it for? Let's zoom in on that. All right. Who's it for, Rob? Um, uh, let's see. I would say, oh, gosh, we've had this discussion uh, on our own. Um, creative people looking to level up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's that. Um, it, it's, let's see. I would say ambient encouragement. <laughs> uh where having uh, just having this on in the background while you're making stuff seems to be a pretty useful use case for folks. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have heard that a lot, <laughs> especially when we do the long ones. Like, oh, it's so great. I can have you going on in the background for like two hours. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess then it's just like uh, the tone of our voice. It's like listening to a conversation through a wall at that point. Right. And it's like positivity, <laughs> positivity. We believe in you. Um, Okay, so yes. ambient encouragement, uh, leveling up. Um, uh, let's see, who else? Who is this for? Um, what? Oh, go for it. You got some. Um, I would say people with a sense of commitment to their to their work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not that we we don't include folks who are about like when we talk, when we ask the question of, about uh, looking at things from a service point of view versus an expression point of view, you know, we kind of say like, hopefully you can combine them both, but making, making things of service is typically more about um, it's reflected more frequently in there. So yeah, people committed to. Um, well, committed, committed in the sense that like, so I, I was just listening to um, the Draftsman podcast, and they were talking about different stages of um, of artistic development, and like when when you should give up, when you should quit, versus when you should press on and just get through that really difficult stage and then see some real growth. And they said that you know, like there are the 
Oh, how, how did you define it? He was actually quoting from a book, and I apologize, I don't remember the title of the book, but they were talking about like the hackers. The hackers are the people who like they figure out how to do like one thing well, and like that's enough. Mm. And they just keep repeating that over and over and over again. And they and their their investigation of the art doesn't go any further than that. They're not interested in anything more or anything deeper than that. I would say you and I are committed to the people who want to figure out more, right? Um, the people who aren't who aren't just content to figure out one thing. They're uh, on a quest to figure out lots of things. That's a good point. Um, I would say that maybe there's also a like which hat and it, so we talk about how if you create things independently and even if you're on a team it's it, it helps a lot to be able to see the other points of view and the different skills that, that are oh, adjacent yeah. to your primary skill yeah and, um so honestly those kind of relate so there's a little bit of that that exploring of when we when are we uh saying like like this is a uh, it's a necessity to dabble in this other thing even though this, you know, something else is my main thing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, willing to wear multiple hats. Yeah, multiple hats. Yeah. DIY. So, yeah, those are two different things. Multiple perspectives, I mean, would be, you know, the conceptual aspect of it and understanding and empathizing. But then the, the, the hats is like, well, yeah. Oh, DIY. I love it. Yep. Okay. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. um, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good start. What do you in? Yeah, you you capture a lot of stuff here. Yep. So, so now some now time to to brainstorm some names. Okay. So now fueled by this, it's like we're trying to what like what we're trying to do in this next step is to more or less have the aboutness channeled at the people in the who right so you're okay. trying to like throw about at the who okay so let me let me create some like flow chart information here so this goes down this way the aboutness channels into the who which is mm -hmm. going to get processed into the new name mm -hmm. okay by yeah. the way i did not know i was going to be uh arranging the information this way this happened on the fly so there's probably a more elegant way to set this up, but this is this is sloppy capture. So no, not at all. So what you okay? It's it's capture, and you have uh, you have these these functional groupings. So yeah. there's stuff in a group that's great, and now you added layer uh, arrows that create more um, uh, obvious relationships, right? So you created this sort of flow um, because you've got the stuff grouped. So that's that's great. I think that is a successful capture. <laughs> okay. I, f I feel reassured. Thank you for the ambient encouragement. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm seeing some things in here. Reflection, feelings, uh, curiosity, shipping, practice. Mm -hmm. um, so we may both have to be writing stuff down for a bit here. If we like, depends depends on the the pace of brainstorming, right? So yeah, yeah. All right, or so, okay. So what if we did the the just lobbed it back and forth? Okay. All right, lob it back and forth, and of course, everybody in the chat is is invited to play along. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this we could talk about this in the second half. We're in a special uh, privileged place here in that we have people who are interacting with the thing we're already making, giving us feedback on this. Whereas. Yep. True, well, true. We started out modeling like the two guys in the room who actually make the thing, talking about what they think it's about. Getting outside feedback is obviously really great. Um, so, so like I think of that Star Trek episode, uh, Through a Mirror Darkly, right? Uh, so, what? are you familiar with the Star Trek episode, uh, the, the Mirror World episode where Spock has the mustache and the, the beard? Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking like reflection, but like we're we're ambient encouragement. So, like, uh, uh, like a mirror brightly, but that doesn't oh. explain. But see here, I I I go again with like that doesn't really tell us what it is. <laughs> Lead it uh, to art honestly, is pretty strange. This is, yeah. but I like your process. So you you're going. We have different styles, and so you're going for um, just 
uh, it's it's like evocative poetry kind of thing of yeah uh, this, that's yeah yeah way more uh, poetic where um yeah okay uh let me think um let's see i'm thinking about uh examples the uh um recently a jersey about- vaguely <laughs> <laughs> A jersey, va- yes, yeah. That that that's my brand. Okay, uh, sorry, Rob, to interrupt your thoughts. No problem, no problem. So, um, just tell the damn story. It's kind of an inspiring name, right? Yeah. So, um, let's see. Like, and, and so now I'm thinking of, of of how other people have put have reached a similar similar audience, right? Um, like comics, comics launch, you know, really uh, emphasizes the launching, launchiness. So Mm -hmm. I, I, um, uh, let's see, how about, um, uh, with this, all right, I'm just going to get out art process vocalization. Oh, that's Gotta good. Somewhere. Art process vocal, vocalization. How about okay, pitching it back to me. Um, so, uh, Lithemus is Ithemus or Lithemus? I can't tell about that first letter. Um, sure. yeah. I like the idea of using practice in the title, but I feel like that would only appeal to people who identify as students. So, grabbing that practice and playing with how can we express that idea is that we're talking about practice not as in not doing the real thing, but practices in the repetition and the showing up over and over again. Sure. So mastery. Draw, reflect, repeat. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure about the word draw. I think it's a little specific uh, because we t- we communicate with images in a variety of ways, but maybe like design, reflect, repeat. I don't know. Design suggests a certain kind of visual communication over another kind. So needs some some iteration, but it's like th- exactly because you have the 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 different cultures, different different groups and subgroups look at those words totally differently. And it's like, mm-hmm. who specifically are we trying to t- trying to reach? Uh, and and so we might need to go even deeper into the specifics. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, just to practice the whole process, try and reflect, repeat. I like that though. Um, hmm. The let's see. Oh, it's it's Joseph. It's Joseph in the chat. Joseph Coco, uh, who inter- awesome. interacts with our show all the time. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. So now now we know it's Lithemus with a lot with a L, but we will here here hereafter refer to you as Joseph. Uh, <laughs> if that's cool, I guess because you're. Um, oh, this is jo- well. Okay, hi Joseph. He, he said that right there. Okay, cool. Um, they uh, okay. So the intentional, um, the okay. All right. Um, how about okay i got too many weird i got okay so i've got path of the artist is in my head so part of it is like i'm trying to only let out one idea so i'm doing editing before i'm letting it come out of my mouth and that's oh that's against the the deal because it's like i only have one you know share to spend i only have one share ticket in this style back and forth so all of a sudden it's causing um uh, editing and editing really isn't a helper for brainstorming. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm getting images in my head as it's pitched back to me, like Lady of the Lake. Uh, I just listened to a whole bunch of lectures on the history of King Arthur. Um, so I'm like thinking about like reflecting pools uh, and like this whole idea of like questing, shipping, uh, progressing, practicing. Um, you know, like there's like this whole idea of like like uh, the the um oh gosh the 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 courtly romance the court in the courtly romance like the the knight has to go in quest in order to prove his uh, love to a maiden kind of idea and it had in like the more unobt- un- unobtainable the maiden the greater his questing <laughs> Which is somebody who's like into like the heroic journey kind of story and like uses that as a like way to make sense of his life. Uh, it's very appealing to me. Like when I think about art, like the, the bigger the challenge, like the greater the work I will create. Um, so I'm just trying to think of like words that like 
hover in that realm. Um, like reflecting pool, uh, reflecting pool in Washington, DC. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm blanking. I'll just grab like reflecting pool. Cause that was what's coming to mind. Reflecting. Okay. That's fine. Uh, pool that's what, that's art. what's important is, is letting the ideas come out when you're in this brainstorm mode and the editing thing. Yeah. That was a, that was a off the cuff, like facilitation idea that, that I think is a flub because it, because it encourages editing and that's not what we want yeah. to do right now. Right. Right. Um, so the, uh, quest, uh, about, uh, the career quests. for storytellers career questing for storytellers or something like that okay i'm running out of room but this is one of the advantages of yeah. working digitally so i'm going to like squeeze it up just a little bit just to fit a couple more because so i just want to i want to model this mm -hmm. as best we can okay okay i finished the transformation there we go okay pen is back um shipping so how about um your art mm -mm. orders up. Um, thinking of like those little spinny things in restaurants. Orders up. And that's <laughs> sure. And, and that, that 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 idea of like churning, like keeping stuff moving. Maybe churning is not the right word, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, good visual metaphor though. Um, there's uh, like like working the process. Mm -hmm, so uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Uh, Joseph has a uh, post out here. Uh, how about artists build? Artists build. Sounds like maybe a phonetic pun on artist guild, which yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it, uh, and it could be read as possessive. It's it's uh, or as uh, plural, right? Art, what artists do, artists build. Mm -hmm. Um, has a verb cool. and noun feeling to it. Yeah, that's uh, okay. So how do we feel about our process now? Um, this like it well, I, I, maybe we could talk in depth about this in the second half, but uh, it took the heat off of generating ideas, right? There's there's nothing fri more frightening than a blank page. Um, well, there's plenty of things more frightening than a blank page, but a blank page is it can be tremendously frightening and it is easy to talk yourself out of starting when you have a blank page in front of you. Yesterday, I had to do some thumbnailing, which is the, the most intellectually difficult part of making comics for me. And it took about a half hour for me to like, even after doing like so many comics pages, I still like when I was looking at that blank page, going like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is going to be hard, you know. But then like it's that whole act of just putting down a line that starts everything. Right. And so, yeah, Amira Brightly, not awesome. Not a great title. <laughs> but I, I, you got to barf out the bad stuff to get to the good stuff. Right. Or maybe it'll be good. But the only way to know that for sure is to test it by trying out some other ideas. Well, well, exactly. So, um, and it's, you're, you're laying this, this path of, of, uh, idea breadcrumbs and stuff, which again, we can dig more into that, uh, later mm -hmm. on, but it just sort of, uh, it was a workout, right? I mean, that was not nothing. We just, you know, working through having uh, a few prompts and getting ideas out, even though, you know, we're, we're renaming a thing that already exists. And I, and I think what happened is, uh, for me, I just, I, I have these dialogues with myself sometimes and it's, it's like part, like, I think I heard a voice in my head at one point or, or we were talking and it's just like lean into art. Dang it. You know, uh, yeah. just go. Yeah. I, I don't remember all the brainstorming we did in the name for this project back then, but I do remember like that clicked because y your definition, like you described it as a plant leans towards light, leans towards nourishment. And then also we are both, uh, we're both uh, constitutionally speaking, very uh, amenable to the idea of effort. Effort is very appealing to us. So we lean into it. We, we try. Right. Um, so yeah, both had like a gentle book, by the way, I think. Oh, oh, that's right. It was just called Lean In, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. I forgot about that. Yeah. Which, not that we were any reference in her world regarding that. I'm just saying, you know, coincidence of people. Wait a minute. Did her book come out before or after we started this project? Right, sure. Came out after. Oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> You're just like, I don't know. I'm going uh, to Twitter right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so do do you feel like we modeled this sufficiently? To I think we did. Forward? Like, I know that there's okay. other other things we can. Um, yeah. All right. So it was published uh, March 11th, uh, 2013, and yeah, we were out in the world. What 2011? So. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Anyway, okay uh finally talked about that the elephant in the room there anyway <laughs> yes yeah, been haunting us i forgot all about that book tell you the truth um okay so how about we take a break and then we come back and talk a little bit more about like this idea of brainstorming and how we think about brainstorming and maybe talk about some more ways of approaching it uh but i think we did an okay job of like just showing like spilling all the stuff onto the table and sorting it into buckets and then letting those buckets affect one another can help drive the creative process so in a minute and 30 seconds, we are going to uh, get to that, you know, the next part, thinking more deeply about it. But before we do that, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And that happens to be the folks who support us on Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. Uh, say like, hey, I believe in Jersey. I believe in Rob. I believe in what they do. And I want to support them for as little as a dollar a month. You can do it for that, that inexpensively. You can help make the show more sustainable. And I want to thank five people who have been doing exactly that. First up, Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Sophie on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art. Also, Brandon Dayton, amazing cartoonist. Thank you, Brandon. You can find him on Twitter at Brandon Dayton. Also, Greg Horvath. You can find Greg on Twitter at IGM Horv, H O R V, 77. Thank you, Greg. And Carrie Goldblum Billick, Mushin Girl on Twitter and everywhere else. Thank you, Carrie. And also, Stefan Black. You can find Stefan on Twitter at Black Sideshow. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash leanatart, where you will find every show we make, as well as the extra leans, the show we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts are not only just like a half hour of me and Rob riffing live, trying to come up with a topic on the fly, but it becomes an open mic thread where you can bring whatever topic you want into a safe place where only leaners hang out. Once again, it's patreon.com slash leanintoart. Thanks, everybody, who has been supporting us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. It's, a, it's such a great signal of encouragement. Thank you. All right. So I think it's time for me to hit the next uh, button so that we can do the next part of the show. Gosh, you know, I'm just going to do the same one again because it's just, I just feel like celebrating. It takes me, takes me, takes me. I got to go. <laughs> Let's all go. Uh, I just, I just, I love how happy it makes you. And I love the fact that I, I finally got uh, most of my setup working for OBS and Twitch. Okay. Uh, what's next? All right. Well, let's, uh, l- let's dig in into more about the mechanics of this. Why is it useful scenarios? Uh, maybe some experiences we've had and uh, if we've got any other, other tips, like some things came out of, of like even your, describing of the exercise right the saying that you know you can brainstorm in the raw sense of maybe just having the lightest purpose or point of like if you got a bunch of creative people on a team and you got to move some you know you got to get something out the door you may just sit around pitching ideas or whatever but brainstorming like came out of um this this uh it's, it's historically my understanding. So brainstorming, um, I've encountered it a few different times in, in, in stages of my career where some folks look at it really formally. And, uh, you know, to me, I was encountered it in like in, in school in different settings. And some folks would be like, yeah, brainstorm some, some ideas. And they mean like just you alone put stuff on a page mm-hmm. and whatever. So like brainstorming, the idea came from um, trying to get better ideas out of a group of uh, creative folks which this, uh, this gentleman, I think, Alex F. Osborne, looking at Wikipedia, um, he, uh, he's credited as the uh, creator of it in that context. For, and then I think that's kind of like where it started to grow its popularity and people you know, writing and sharing it stuff. And I think it has kind of this sort of you know, like-dislike you know, uh, relationship where not everyone wants to get together in a group and, and brainstorm ideas, but that uh, because it's it's meant to be a safe place for everybody, right? So if you're the head writer or whatever, it's uh, or the intern, like everyone's meant to throw ideas out. And 
um, and, and essentially just doing, let's see, some just really basic mechanics of, of, you know, you have some prompt and then a group of people, and then you, you sort of, um, get ideas out and reach for as many as you can while not, not doing the editing. Like I mentioned the whole like editing tension in, in the earlier. And, and that's, uh, so if, if, you know, Jersey says aardvark and I'm like, aardvark, what? It, any kind of like diss on, on his sharing of an idea is, is antithetical because now and it creates a chilling effect, not just for him, but for everyone else in the room. And I think we've probably all been in situations where there's rooms where ideas aren't as welcome. And anyway, so like the overall, the positive aspect of it, if it's facilitated in a friendly way and in a safe place, you can get more ideas than just one person sitting there. Um, but even one person sitting there, I think the concept is still useful. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, some language I use in my classrooms a lot is that a cartoonist cartoonists think through association or like a lot of cartoonists think through association. We associate with things like when I draw like a bumpy line and I'm like, what do you think of? And like, Oh, I think of a gravelly road. I think of like an EKG monitor, the heart's beating for a smooth line. Oh my gosh, they're dead. Or, Oh, that's a clear, that's a smooth, freshly paved road. Right. We associate with things and that's how cartoonists build meaning through images by creating these images that evoke association. So if I use a bumpy line on a an angry guy's face, it looks like he's trembling with rage. Right. Um, and so, too, I feel like we can do um, our own brainstorming through word association that way as well. It's like, I can throw out aardvark. Well, what does that make me think of? Well, it makes you think of these six other things. Well, just grab them all. Grab them all. Put them in a row. Uh, put, them in a, put them in a list. And, you know, let that free association happen because odds are... Th th this is something I'm also reminded of something I read uh, Jenny Holmes say once is that like, there's no plot hole so big that a 20 minute jog can't fix it. You know, like you go out and you run to let your subconscious do the work, <laughs> do some kind of physical activity, let your subconscious kind of chew on that a little bit. Um, and I feel like that word association might get you to some of that unconscious thinking without, you know, uh, the editor can get in the way of it. That's great. That's another, another approach is, it happens in the group environments where you react to things other people share, which can be great, but it can have like a filter that, well, maybe, maybe you wouldn't have even said a, a, a creature from the planet if, unless someone kind of got you going that way. And if the point is to be as diverse in thinking as possible while still be welcoming, you can actually kick it off where with um, individuals capturing at the same time but not sharing and then you share after you capture and so then then you can get the association and the influencing one another too which which again is powerful but it's a filter so it's uh yeah you know choose your own adventure based on what you're where you're trying to go with the the, <laughs> the techniques <laughs> Joseph's is still going in the chat exercising art sounds good yeah <laughs> that's a good one yeah We've um, often used the metaphor of dojo too, right? Like like this yeah. idea of showing up to practice. Like you go to the dojo not to be the expert. You go in there to like keep honing. Uh, honing, there's another good word. Uh. <laughs> Can't stop and won't stop. Brainstorm <laughs> keeps going. There's always a brainstorm somewhere in your life. <laughs> Foreground to background. That's the only question. Um. So, uh, I mean... I feel like you're kind of getting around this idea of like you describing what it is, but like, let's get to some whys. Like why, why do it? Why not? Cause like for some people, good ideas just happen. It feels like it's a good idea at the time and uh, run with it. Why waste any more time with preliminaries? Well, um, I think some creative environments work that way. I don't find them to be that attractive or robust to be a part of. So and not to say that like, no, well, I, I, my ego is big enough where I have to be somewhat involved or influencing in, in the thing. It's that uh, I don't think anyone's like this perfect magical genius. So, and we, we can all make each other better. We can make ourselves better if we're willing to at least, even if that thing that came out, if it was, you know, instant genius, I think, I think a genius is more likely to emerge after after some process, after some effort, and, and at least be verified of like, you know what, 
that was the right one. We wandered off the track. We started off in the right place. And now you feel confident and focused. You can keep moving. So that whole idea of um, being willing to uh, test your ideas and get past your own point of view to say that it's okay. It, c- it can go somewhere better or it might go somewhere better. I don't know. Let's, let's try. I, I am very guilty of this. Uh, when I come up with an idea for a project that I get very excited about because I feel like it answers some problems that I've had personally with something or other. Um, like what do you mean? Like, I uh, well, I, I, I don't want to get to too much specifics, but this happened very recently where there was a project that I had been dragging my feet on for a long time. And mm-hmm. then I think I found a new way to approach it that really answered a lot of the reasons that I was feeling so reluctant about it. And I got very enthusiastic and I felt very, I have a tendency to feel very uh, pleased with my own, my own cleverness sometimes, like when it comes to my creative work. Like when I feel like I've solved a creative problem, I get very, I very much like cross my arms in a satisfactory way. I'm like, yeah, I did it. I got it. Look, I figured it out, you know, and I'm ready to tell all of you I figured it out, you know, and it's not, to, not to like say like I've, I've done the best, I found the best solution for everybody. I found my best solution, right? And I get very excited about it. And then somebody, a very, you know, very kind, intelligent people in my life will go like, yeah, but, and they point out the push in that one spot. And then I get very angry, you know, like, like, re- like I throw like a tantrum, like, I'm like, what? No, it's a perfect solution. Why can't you idiots see this? You know? Uh, and then I calm down again. And I realize, oh yeah, they're, they're trying to help me. And they were pointing out how it's not the perfect idea. And I didn't adequately test it before I announced that it was the perfect idea, you know? Um, so I, I get in my own way with my, my perspective, my point of view and my, um, my initial assumptions about what is, you know, what's good in art. Um, and you know, I, I could do, I would do well to remember in the future to like test out, test drive my ideas and, and, and do a little bit more brainstorming at the outset, uh, or even do like a couple different iterative versions to like put in front of a few trusted people to say like which one is feels like you instantly understand it right not which one's the best but which one feels like it's communicating its mission to you most clearly um i i mean i i agree with you but it it is a tool it is it's it's a tool so if you have your genius and you're ready to just go for it and that i don't know that somehow functions and works for your projects and process then that can be a fine mode to work in. I think it can be difficult in a collaborative sense, right? So if now, you know, showing up as the the genius as opposed to a we are a genius, right? That can be hard. Um, and, you know, you can get some conflict going with that. Um, but, but the, uh, um, and the, and it's, but sometimes the art process is so, is so that way, right? Where you look at, I'm not a, like a super um, historian, historian expert on, on bands, but I'd like to think of bands who create music and, um, you know, read about them from time to time and, and, and hear stories as far as how things got made and different decisions. How do people decide things and, and how do you navigate that process? And this is, one of the, this is one of those tools that you could use, brainstorming. It's all, I mean, you don't do it just for, um, because if your decision is made, if you have decided, you don't need to question it. If what's your, what's your relationship with decisions and the creative process? And so some folks, this is distasteful. Like this is a, you know, this is a, this is a bowl full of garbage. <laughs> but okay, so let me, let me clarify what I was trying to describe a moment ago. Is that like in the case of the example I was thinking of, I had not considered who it was for. I considered what I thought it was. And I just, you know, I, I knew how it was uh, an expression of what I, what I think is interesting and cool, but I didn't find, I, I didn't consider who is it for and how can I describe it in such a way so that they understand it, right? And depending on your resources as an artist, like there may not be that much testing you can do. And if it's not that expensive mm-hmm. to produce it, then, then the test is making it and yeah, seeing, yeah. seeing how it meets its audience or doesn't. Yeah, and that that goes back to something Kazuki Buishi said to me once. Is like in in his experience, it's just just make the thing you want to make, but be prepared to make it again, because if somebody else expresses uh, interest in uh, investing in it in some way, 
they're going to want to have some say in like what it ultimately looks like and that you may have to redo a lot of it to do that which if you're committed to the thing then that doesn't sound like such a huge ask yeah and it's sort of like well which of these which aspects of of you and your your skill are being brought to this situation. It's uh, like we've described a kind of a holistic creative process as far as the cycles of making something from conceptual to concrete, getting it in the world and what have you, thinking through the ideas. And this is about like brainstorming is about helping you navigate those phases. Um, and to, is it just a tool to get to, to get moving to a more developed stage of what you're trying to make? And then mm -hmm. if you're doing, whether you're doing that and you're trying to find the most fit idea based on either you individually or the group you're working with, um, but then there's also the, let's see, this, there's the stages, but then there's also the different hats as far as like your, your project doesn't exist. Um, it is incomplete. Even once you've made it, you still have to find a way to, to market it and put it, you know, get it out fully published and, and have it actually reach your audience and stuff. There's more hats to wear. Right. As we <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, so that's interesting. Uh, and so it depends. some bands have have a, a, a leader or a, or a voice that's that has more of the, um, you know, more, con I guess, more of the agency or the control. They, 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 they steer the ship or whatever. Right. So I don't know. I'm not here to 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 say like that's not that doesn't work. It totally works. It depends on you and your team, whatever. Um, but. It's not, I tend to, to, to go for techniques that are, that, that are more inclusive, but also I just want to say, I get attached to my ideas too, Jersey. So you're not alone. It's um, yeah. So I, uh, I have worked for long periods of time on different things that have, you know, some, some have, have found an audience, but some, some have not. And that's, uh, those are, that's one of the reasons why I, I've become more and more, um, in tuned and practiced with techniques to uh, to navigate the darn creative process faster, so I can test my ideas <laughs> sooner. Yeah. All right. Yep. Um. Yeah. So, uh, so somebody in the chat is asking about some language that I used earlier. Uh, Marie OXB asks, "Trying to make what you would like is hugely different from doing what you feel like doing." Right. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe it wasn't very clear. Um, first of all, I, I, I. I make graphic novels and I love doing it. So like I'm already doing what I like doing um, that. But then there's like more service driven work that I do where I'm doing it with a client who is funding something. And I am, while I have a great degree of creative control, I'm still making it for an audience, a specific audience. And that dictates the direction to a degree of what the things that it'd be like versus making a project that is full expression to find funding that somebody for somebody who believes in that expression. And in that case, doing what I like means doing the story that I that is most reflective of me unfettered me uh, my 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 worldview my perspective without any influence of what I'm assuming a group of people wants um, and and then the, the challenge becomes for me at least is that communicating that vision so that people hear what I'm saying and don't get tripped up on too many details that I'm putting in there um, because I'm you know assuming that everybody sees this thing as I see it. Um, I hope that clarifies. I think it does. I think part of that that describes too is that having the, the sometimes you have a component of the genius that comes out in your idea and that if you're willing to explore it, if you're willing to find a more, um, if you can get around it from a, a broader perspective from yourself, it's like, well, why did I say that? All of a sudden, you you can find ways to make it serve and be more relatable to to different audiences. This this is what I was I was noticing in the notes when you first drafted up this episode. Is I was like, oh yeah, this this reminds me of a conversation I had recently, where uh, I was describing a, a bickering match I got into with somebody, an argument, and then the the person we were talking to had the presence of mind to say, but what was that fight really about? You know, it was like it was about all this surface stuff, it's like oh you you put the chair back too far when I'm driving the car with you. You know, I don't have enough leg room. What's that fight really about? Right? Like there's there's more to it than what is apparent in the moment right like when you have a fight with somebody that like you're really close to um so sure, sometimes invest kind of like have your own like having a, a conversation with your own thoughts it's like you're really close to your own thoughts but you may not you may not fully appreciate like the um or be totally ready to transmit the, the that idea without exploring it further 
Um, mm. Because yeah, that's that's um, and and that's one of the things I like about uh, techniques that are of of doing generative generative creative work. Um, it's like I can find more interesting patterns among different names of places and characters in a story, or um, I can uh, just sort of let myself visit all these different things that are in my head and say, okay, I see which ones need to float to the top right now, right? I don't have to be 100% attached to everything I'm, I'm thinking of. I can, um, this lets me just sort of get it out of my head and then focus on what I need to focus on. Mm-hmm. So. Creating, well, I'm, what I'm also hearing in there is that you're creating a, like, a sense of emotional distance from what you're doing too, at least a little bit. I guess a little bit, just enough, right? I still, there's still enough. Um, yeah, I guess that's why I do that, right? So that that really floats my boat. So um, <laughs> just a smidgen of that distance to say that um, going full force in a direction on a project um, is a little bit haunting to me, right? And I can do it, I can proceed with confidence and um, less uh, and less stressful, even if, you know, with deadlines and stuff, knowing that um, I, I tried to um, think it through more. Mm -hmm. so. I, I think, I think it's related to getting, uh, receiving critique, right? I think it's, it's, it's that, that method of stepping back from it a little bit is like the same technique I've noticed that I do when I'm receiving input from people who I trust, when I'm not too emotionally gripping of the, of the ideas, like, because if, if you are open to listening and investigating, then like potentially even better stuff is going to bubble up. You're going to make a better thing. Um, and you know, if you, I noticed that when I can step back and let go of this idea of me being the, the, the creative force of everything in the universe and that I am doing, this could only exist because of me, right? If I let, let the fact that, oh, other influences are going to make this thing happen and, and I'm going to be influenced by the world around me and the people around me and their ideas are going to influence this thing, uh, sometimes really, really great stuff can happen um, and make an even better product that I get to incidentally put my name on. <laughs> So not, not so incidentally. Right. But yeah, it's that, that's exactly it. So this, this is, um, and, and I think the mechanics of this help help with, um, I guess, building up a capacity to say that, um, it's, you're, you're willing to, to sort of your practice, pushing through your own creative process, uh, you're pra practicing, um, including more of your thoughts. And it's like, even though, it's not saying that your instinct is incorrect or your gut is wrong. It's saying that it may not be quite the whole picture and it can be, it's possible that what you do is even better by, you know, in, including more. And even if it's, if you're including other points of view, if you're working at, together with people on this, that you're having practice with that is I think going to probably carry you, carry you farther more, with more fun and, and uh, enjoyment for everybody because, and satisfaction because you're um, it doesn't feel good to have your, your voice uh, squished out of the process and you're a human being and you're somehow having like what you create can be intentionally added to the bigger picture or it might just be incidental. And I think you're probably going to be better if it's intentional. Yeah. And yeah, getting included that way. Maria is continuing to add more to this discussion, uh, saying so, like something is closer to quenching your thirst, but other things are like doing things more like doing something that works. So like, yes, there's the things that are more like this is the thing that I wanted to bring in the world because this scratches an itch for me versus this is something that communicates and is effective. And it's uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm taking the privilege of rewording Marie's uh, <laughs> statement here, but I'm, I'm trying to like use my own words to demonstrate whether or not I'm understanding this um, versus doing things that like are effective and communicative and and register with the people who it's for. And and Marie continues when you hit that stride i do think that it is beyond you and is generative and beyond you in a way like it's it's bigger than you um something that is foreign but alive means there's something more to it that's certainly a signal we can get with something right it's like when it feels like okay this thing is now um 
taking on a life of its own. And it even reminds me of things that authors have said. And I've had this happen with work where like you start to feel like you're not really working anymore, but like the characters are just like saying things and you're just listening in on the conversation and transcribing it. Um, but also like when you have a big project where more people are contributing to it, like for instance, uh, in my case, it's A2CAF, right? That's an event where there's a lot of partners and a lot of people shaping what the thing looks like. And yes, I have an agenda of my own. I have like this, this particular audience I'm trying to serve or I'm trying to focus on. I'm here to celebrate artists. And I'm here to connect them meaningful with young people or connect them in meaningful ways with young people, right? But there's other concerns and there's other stakeholders, there's other partners, there's other voices in the room who all get to help shape what that looks like. So... Yeah, that that's um, I think being willing to the and it's kind of maybe it's a little abstract, but I think like the the raw practice of 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 being able to continue to generate even if the ideas are uncomfortable means like you can you can hold your own sort of safe space with with uh, um, with yourself and with your collaborators and mm-hmm. uh, find ways to connect those other ideas and stuff and that could be you know be like bigger process like doing things. Uh, after brainstorming, kind of like what we did, where we started to, we were progressing in the in the example earlier on where we did the demo, there was not just, we didn't just like brainstorm names. We could have just started with that, right? We created um, like sort of a, a process, a series, a series of effort that built off of the, built off of itself. And uh, that's, yeah, that's useful in a lot of, a lot of scenarios. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we coming up on final thought? I, yeah, I think so. Like, what do you, what do you think here would be an interesting question to, to address? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, so like one, I was considering that ah. we don't have to, we don't have to go there, but like if in all this, um, in all this sort of just sort of generate ideas and then use that, right? Like Mm-hmm. Stuff just happens in a room, whether you're solo or, or in a, with a group of people. Um, it, but it hasn't met the outside world yet. It's like we 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 talked. Actually, we mentioned it along the way that part of this is to get stuff in the world and learn how what it's like when it meets its audience and stuff. And that's that's kind of like research. Um, what do you think? Uh, do we do we want to think about? Is there a fit for research in this brainstorming? creative process yeah okay i think that's great yes because i'm reminded of something i just got back from the PowerCon he-man and the masters of the universe convention the annual conference and there were uh some panel discussions with mattel people who were there at the beginning when they were first developing the the toy line and they they talked a lot about play testing and how that drove uh. what the thing became based on things that they noticed that the kids were doing so we, we talk about like like how we could think about, you know, what what does evidence research and feedback look like at the brainstorming process before you've got the full picture of what the thing could be, where you just have like a, a vague sense of what it could be. Um, maybe you've got like a lot of good data collected of like what you the, the aboutness is, who you want to serve. Maybe you've got a whole collection of ideas of like what the thing could be, but then how do you start to sift that information? How does an outside party come in to help shape that? Does that did I summarize it? I like it. That's a good okay. summary. The okay. influence of research. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, we'll, in about a minute and a half to two minutes, we'll come back and, and, and approach that final thought. But before we do that, we got to thank some more people who make this show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make this show possible. We make all sorts of things, and we bring the thoughts that occur to us while we're making the things into this show. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out is Boulder and Fleet Adventures for Hire, which is a 92-page graphic novel, graphic novella, comic book, whatever you want to call it. It's a comic. It's got pictures and sequence. And it's about two best friends, a bear and a bird, who go off adventuring together. The, the bird is very ambitious, and she wants to be a famous adventurer. And how do you do that? Well, you conquer bad guys. But her, she's partnered with this very powerful bear who just wants to be friends with everybody. He would rather uh, be be uh, like turn bad guys into good guys if he could. Um, and he doesn't really like to fight. So that, that complicates things for the two of them. But they love each other and they go on adventures together and it's talking animals and all sorts of fantasy creatures. You can find it at books.jdros.com or on Indie Planet. I think you can get, you can get a, a digital download or you can get the physical book for, I think it's $15.99 shipped to your door. Rob, you make a thing with your wife. 
Yeah, that's that's true. So um, we have recently been soft launching a coaching business where uh, both Kate and I are, um, you know, we we coach in, in a few different arenas. So, uh, you know, Kate is all about uh, coaching, like doing life coaching for couples and uh, and individuals, but especially couples who are working on a business, right? So it could be, you know, one or both of you are launching your thing. And then you've got the, all the other stuff that you're juggling as far as your roles and other commitments in life and, and whatnot. And so at, there's, there's always probably some next goal or thing that you're working on and talking it through with the coach is super helpful. So yeah, that's, that's what Kate focus on, focuses on. And for me, I'm more about the, um, the, the inclusive collaborative design process and coaching about just, you know, uh, getting through creative barriers, right? So that's, that's what well, I just call that creative process and design coaching. And I do that for individuals and teams as well. It's uh, really easy to, uh, to get to our site with a shortcut URL. Um, I would say use either um, uh, robcoach.me or mycoachkate.com. And that'll bring you to our different pages and you'll, uh, yeah, see, see, you know, see what, see what that's about and consider um, how is, you know, like there's, there was probably something about what you're making or what you're building toward in your next, you know, that next level of, of, um, you know, goal and, and, uh, you know, where you, the project you're trying to build, there's a thing keeping you up at night. Uh, It's, you've got the tools to work through that coaches just kind of like power you up to, to help make that happen. So yeah, and you can check that out. Uh, sign up for, a, for a, uh, a free discovery session and you'll get a sample of what that coaching's like and how it would apply to you specifically. That's great. Shieldstenzinger.com or robcoach.me. What was Kate's? Mycoachkate.com. Mycoachkate.com. Okay. If you are here because you like the stuff, how we think about things rather than the stuff we make, fair enough. This show is the thing that we make and we have more self-contained videos like it at leanandtwork.com slash workshops. You can download self-contained videos at a price of your choosing, even free. And if you're watching it on uh, you know, YouTube, Twitch, whatever platform you watch video, giving us a thumbs up, uh, upvote. Uh, I guess on Twitch, you could just, you, yeah, you can, you can follow us and like us on Twitch. Um, it helps more people find us. And then if you're listening to it, a podcatcher, uh, podcast listening device, giving us a five-star review wherever you listen to us, that helps more people find the show as well. And thank you to everybody who has. It means a lot to us. Okay. Sure does. Thank you. All right. Final thought. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's see. You think about... Um, in a way, getting there, there's there's the scenario of, okay, you're you're behaving in a more, uh, you're using more tools of your creative process. There's not just this one genius, you know, bloop falls out this idea. You can explore it and stuff. But then, if you're still exploring it with only you or whoever's in the room, you know, where's the uh, where's the value of research? Where where does that come in? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'll use that story that I heard at the PowerCon this weekend is that these guys, all they knew is that they wanted to make an action figure marketed towards boys. Remember, this is like the late seventies, early eighties. So like, you know, we're still, we're still wrestling with this whole like gendered toys thing, but, um, but they, they, their words were Barbie for boys. Right. And like, yes, you had GI Joe adventure heroes, but it was very militarily based. They were saying like, oh, and they were noticing a couple trends. They were saying, hey, this Star Wars thing seems to be a big deal. And Conan the Barbarian seems to be a big deal. Can we put those together somehow? Can we say, like, can you do science fiction and, like, sword and sorcery in the same thing um, and then make it, like, a hero who can have, like, lots of different looks? So, like, the original idea was, like, He-Man wasn't just going to be, like, a barbarian. He's going to be, like, a barbarian, but then there's space He-Man, then there's army He-Man and so on. And th- they didn't have they didn't have a whole lot to go on yet. They just had a name, and they had this idea of like trying to mix some genres. And they put these toys in front of kids. And th- there's actually three figures originally. There was a barbarian figure, and then there was like a military figure who had like a tank t- uh, tank uh, turret for a head. And then there was like a repainted Boba Fett figure. They're like, okay, here's Space He Man, here's Army He Man, here's Barbarian He Man. Let the kids play with the toys, and they said that they noticed that the kids all had a fascination with this idea of power. They were all about like characters having power over one another. And what's the most famous thing about the He-Man character? Everybody knows it. It's the I have the power thing. Well, that was born out of the fact that 
these kids were so like they, they picked up on this word. It happened a lot during playtesting. And so it informed what the thing became. The fact that he raises his sword and asks for the power and then says, I have the power came from playtesting with kids, at least according to these Mattel designers. Um, so the, the, the research or the seeing how the ideas are uh, interacted with, with people who are A, going to use the thing, or B, people who are in your trusted circle, maybe like friends, people whose taste you really respect, can have a profound effect on focusing, you know, like uh, where, okay, I'm getting a signal from, here's, here's my array of ideas, but this, like if you talk about like using the metaphor of, um, what do they call that, heat mapping, right? Like everybody seems to focus around this particular quadrant of my array of ideas, Okay, let's focus in on that. Now, I've, now I can start to refine that particular area. That's really similar to what we did in the beginning, right? So having having some kind of purposeful association, either that you go into or um, or emerges from the data itself, right? That's I mean that that's kind of the difference between having um, themed buckets planned ahead of time versus themed buckets that emerge after or uh, heat map, which is some kind of association. So the heat map, the idea is like a lot of, you know, you're visualizing data over a f space, a two-dimensional space probably. And then all of a sudden, lots of similar data piles up in different piles. But the piles, you're, you're filtering the data already based on something. Something causes the piles, right? Is this mm -hmm. um, emotion, right? So sentiment from positive to negative. Is it... Um, you know, themes that you discover in the data. So there's piles of data about barbarian space, you know, tank head, whatever. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, uh, okay, so so that's using some of the tools of, uh, that. that's using a lot of tools of research. And what I'm hearing in your story overall is that there must have been creative effort stuck in different stages along the way. And so you can bookend the, um, when it's time to, uh, think about what is it, what are we learning and what are, what, what does this mean? Okay. Let's get ideas out and share. And then, okay, now what do we want to test here? Okay. Well, tank head space guy and, and barbarian. And then let's, okay, now let's go test that. And the, the brainstorming in, in the research, you know, obviously it's a false, I mean, every time we point up like and lean into art, we, we're really, pretty transparent about saying like, um, we don't do great clickbaity headlines. We don't do great false dichotomies. Um, you know, that's, that's not our, that's not our, our, our good, what we trade in and best around here. Um, because honestly it's both right. So you, you, so there's a time to do the creative work, but then a time to do, to, to do the, you know, the brainstorming and, you know, solo group, whatever. But then there's that, uh, get out in the world and be influenced. And then, admitting that even in the beginning there was that 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 event that that caused the reason for the brainstorm and where do they where do they even begin well it's because of an event in the world it wasn't just a genius thought of he-man right 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 yeah it didn't come out of nowhere with the world yeah yeah um yeah, a fun a fun thought experiment, rather than, not a thought experiment, but a creative experiment we do in my classroom is where I, I ask the students to reinvent uh, a genre that they that they that they actively dislike. Like write down a genre that you would never read on purpose. Now we're going to come up with a concept based on that genre. Like how would you fix it? And it's an investigation of what you're reacting to in that genre, like the assumptions about that genre. Um, but also to describe to them that like you as as an artist you are reacting to the world you are operating within the times that you're operating within that's a fantastic exercise jersey i hadn't <laughs> heard of this one. Oh, really oh i, I should yeah. write out these these lesson plans i need to put these lesson plans in a book um yeah everyone yes. nod with me Feel it, <laughs> yeah i know i know i know um there are some fabulous books being written about how to teach comics right now and i feel like those voices like need to be held up and nobody needs to hear mine until those voices have been heard um i'll, I'll come in i'll come in as the as the uh the epilogue <laughs> but um 
But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, I think that's a good thing to remember too, is that feedback is also a reminder that you are operating within a world and having a conversation with that world. And uh, while things can can happen spontaneously on their own, um, in my experience, most of my favorite stuff hasn't been that way. My favorite projects have always been me reacting to something um, and thinking about who it's for, thinking about what what I would have to say to them. Um, so, well, what do you think, Jersey? Did we did we walk around that topic? I I think we did. I think we did a podcast. Okay, so thank you, Rob, for this topic. Thanks for everybody in the uh, the chat for providing feedback and input and helping us brainstorm. And uh, we record the show Thursdays. Looks like we're doing them at noon uh, Eastern time from now on. And we stream it live on Twitch and then collect it as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. Until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger all over the place, like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user Lean Into Art, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.